the children were here. Did that sound weird? My niece and nephew, they came in town. We had a great time. We all got to meet and hang out. The pool was utilized to an extreme. What the heck kind of a bird was that? It sounds like a squeaky toy. I see you. What are you? I can only see its butt. I can't identify a bird from its butt. Where'd you go? Come back. Okay, all right. I need to get back on topic. Whatever the topic is. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How are you Hope you're doing well. I'm great. The last few videos have been kind of wonky and out of order with life. Had to film things so that I could take time off to spend with family. And now that's done and back to reality. There's a few things that need to be done out here. Nothing pressing. It's actually one of the few occasions where I can just kind of sit back, relax, and go, this is nice. Things are good. There's always going to be little things. You need to prune off last winter's foliage from this coconut palm, and there's always weeds. <laughs> As y'all know, I don't worry about those. One major thing. Huge, huge. Actually, huge. What am I talking like there's nothing going on in this video? Huge change. Finally have furniture for the patio. Not that there's ever been a shortage of furniture. There's always been too much furniture out here. But I've never had a conversation set. And, I, you know, I'm just going to replay the clip from the last video. And that'll explain everything. I have been trying to find an outdoor seating set for this patio since 2020. You just got me really turbo. Okay, you're what? Trying to find an outdoor seating set for this patio since basically 2020. But then a lot of stuff happened in 2020. It had some stuff I had to get done out here first. Everything just kind of went to heck. The problem was that there was messes out here because from 2019 to 2021 into 2022, I just wasn't able to do a lot out here physically. And uh, there's just one project left and it's this corner right here. And it's not even a big project. It's going to be a fun one. I needed to get this place in shape before I could really put furniture out here. We've got the new table in 2021, maybe? Something like that, I don't know. It's a great table, I like it. But I've wanted to have a seating set. That's the whole point of the story. But I haven't been able to find one that I liked that was a price that I thought made sense. Because with the dogs, and now there's gonna be children out here, I just didn't want to spend like eight to 12 grand on something that's gonna be outside in the elements and get dirty do you know what i mean it's just i don't know the cost on outdoor everything as y'all know 2020 just skyrocketed they're starting to come back down been through wayfair home depot lowe's grandin road ballard designs front gate lots and lots and lots lots of places like just looked high and low and uh, eventually found something i liked on amazon i have mixed feelings about ordering furniture off of amazon the price was right there were a lot of different options. The only issue I had was that, well, there are a few issues. One, everything is wicker, and I don't like wicker. I think it looks nice, but I don't like the way it feels on your, like when you do this. I don't, I don't like that. I don't, it just, it irritates, my skin doesn't like it. I don't like the way it feels. And from my experience, they tend to not last too terribly long in the sun, and the sun gets intense over here in this corner, which is where I want to put the furniture set. Although I might just move the table over there and put the furniture set talk about that later when it's time to get the furniture. I can always move things around. I wanted something that had a couch and swivel rockers. That was like my bare minimum or a sectional, but none of the sectionals had arms on them. It was like everybody wants an arm to lean on. So I decided no sectionals because I could have fit one in here that would have gone this way, then come up this way. That would have been like you're, you'd have to walk through like a little hallway when you come out that door, but nobody ever uses that door. So that doesn't matter. I didn't find anything where I was getting everything that I wanted, where I would have the sofa a couple swivel rockers and like a fire pit table or something like that. And then I did some digging and managed to piece together separate pieces from separate sellers that I think are going to match the loves, not love seats, the sofa is coming with blue cushions. The chairs are coming with gray cushions. I think that's fine. And I've become a bit of a cushion snob ever since these things came into my life. So y'all know I'll probably be changing the cushions out anyway. So none of that even matters. I'm just excited. I think that they will fit over there. This is kind of a tight spot. So that was the other issue, was that a lot of the furniture is really big, and I love big furniture, but it needed to fit out here. I'm just, I'm so excited. I am so happy. Years and years and years of searching, and I finally pieced together something that I think is going to work well out here and look good. The wicker on them may not match, but I think it's going to be close enough. And it's basically everything I wanted. So the arms are wood or faux wood. I assume, and the bases are wicker, 
and I just I think they're going to look very nice but you know it's Amazon and the prices were really really cheap like shockingly cheap which had nothing to do with why I got them I actually just really really liked them and when I found out that I could get just the love seat and not have to buy like a huge set I said okay well that sounds like the way to go just get the love seat don't buy the whole set because the whole set doesn't have all the stuff you need it has chairs which are great but I wanted swivel rockers over there the uh, sofa is a three-piece set because it's like the whole thing comes from a giant sectional and they sell it in all different configurations and I decided to just get the sofa so it's actually three pieces so I can remove the middle piece and just have a love seat and two chairs which I think will fit better over there I measured so I, if it's going to be out in a full love seat it will fit there but I just I like the idea that there are options to play with that's all and also this rug while I do think that is very pretty especially for $34.99 it's not really going to look right with this furniture set, but that's okay. I can put it somewhere else. Okay, so we're on the same page now. The furniture arrived. I've set it up. Do you want to see what it looks like? For, look at Persephone. All these blooms. She's covered. Looking fantastic. This is something I've wanted to do for such a long time. Sorry I didn't bring you all along for the part where I put it all together, but there was just, there are too many other things going on. Okay, are you ready? You ready? Well, hold on. I'm going to put, we'll put the camera up here. And then here's some clips, various clips of what this space has looked like in all of its glory and all of its shame. And now, look at, look at, isn't it beautiful? I know, it's nothing drastic, but to me, it finishes off the space. Pardon the hose, I had just pulled it out because I was doing some rinsing. I didn't pull it back all the way. I probably should have done that for the big reveal. It's a small conversation set. It's, I don't know if it's technically a set because I had to get the pieces from different places. These actually, they don't go together. I think they look close enough to go together, but they're not made by the same company. You can see there's some slight differences in tone. It was just so important to me <laughs> to have the rocker swivel chairs because those are what's comfortable and a small love seat or sofa over here. And this is actually a sofa. The other piece that goes to it is over here. It is. It's right here. I just, I had to move it. It didn't fit in there. It was too big for that spot. But if need it for extra seating, then can just pull those apart and then pull everything else forward and it will fit. But I think that just leaving it with the full on sofa, it looked awkward. So I pulled it out and other people can sit over here in the other chairs if need be. Ultimately, I would like to get a little fire pit and space things out more appropriately so people don't burn themselves a fire pit coffee table for the spot. For now, I think this is good. I really love it. Look, it's the whole space. It's finally coming together. I'm probably gonna change out the end tables. These are just ones that I had. The ottoman is, uh, it's inflatable. <laughs> it's like 30 bucks on Amazon. I just wanted something here right away that would be more affordable. And uh, well, it wasn't yet, that is a factor. Okay, yes, I want it to be affordable, but also quick. Cause I had the family coming in town. I wanted this spot to be done when everybody got here. So it was like 30 bucks and inflatable. Isn't that weird? Inflatable ottoman. I don't mind it. It's not that sturdy, but it's an ottoman. So it doesn't really need to be just question the longevity of it. I cleaned out this entire area. I pulled a few plants to make some room in here. So there's not as much going on on the ground over here anymore. I mostly just leveled things up, <laughs> move them up on top of other plants to make space on the ground and did some, you know, decor and random things on the table back here. There's still plenty of room to get into this cabinet and the furniture's small. This is very lightweight, so it's incredibly easy. I've gone in and out of that cabinet two or three times a day. It's not hard to just give these a little tug to pull them out and reach in there. But for the most part, there's enough room that I've only had to actually pull the furniture out to get in there. I think one time something was buried way, way, way back there into the cabinet. The cushions are wet, so it's not probably the best time to be showing all this you can see the color when it's dry right there <laughs> this pillow was sitting here before the throw pillows are just pillows that I had uh, I think the gray and blue goes fine together the swivel rockers didn't have an option for blue so that's just the way it had to go these are perfect for what I wanted though because the arms are nice and open and they're not wicker I think I talked about that in the clips I just replayed I just I don't like wicker arms they look fine. It's just, I don't like the way they feel on my skin. So this is better. It's also, it's nice. Like if you have a drink or your phone, like you can actually set things on these of the wicker ones that are flat. 
it's just a thing. It's aesthetically, I think it's fine. I just, it's, I don't like it. I wanted wood arms. These aren't wood. They're plastic and poly product or metal or something. I don't know. But it fits. It's fairly small. And I really think that it finishes off this area wonderfully. I've wanted this for years. I'm so happy right now. I finally got my little faux beach house thing going on over here. This has been on my mind for as long as I can remember. The steps and the pillar and having a seating set over there. It, just, it looks so good and it's so cozy. It's very cozy. I know the hose is ruining it. We're just going to have to get used to that. Y'all know there's always going to be a hose out here somewhere. Oh, another reason that I didn't want to leave this as the sofa and shrink down to the love seat is because I do want things to be open here. No, nobody ever uses this door. It would still be nice to have that path open because I had to spend a lot of time cleaning out this area to open up that path. And you'll remember what this looked like, right? I, I played those clips. Things were pretty intense over here for a few years. So I wanted it to be clean. The Adenidia does stick out some, so uh, I don't know. I've thought about scooting it back into the garden, but there's a banana tree directly where it would need to go, and I can't go over to the side because there's a little sable Louisiana, and there's a sable miner. I don't want to spend too much time on all the little things that I could change. Instead, should be focusing on the drastic improvement over here. Doesn't I, What do you think? Do you like it? The cushions, they're not great, but this was not very expensive furniture. As far as outdoor furniture is concerned, I wouldn't consider it cheap by any means, but I've been looking for years, years, for a seating set that I liked out here that would have rocker swivels. It's when you, These things, these are so stupid expensive. These particular ones, it wasn't terrible for the set, but a lot of them, you were looking at over $1,000 for a lot of them. They're also larger furniture, and I love oversized furniture. I love it so much. But that just wasn't going to work for over here, right? That It's just not space. It would have made everything look really weird having big chunky furniture over here. And the, as it is, it actually is. It's fairly deep. But I wouldn't consider it oversized furniture. It's a cushion, so that's what I was going to talk about. They're okay quality. Not very thick or firm. I don't foresee them lasting a very long time. Particularly the ones that came on the sofa. Like, they're real flimsy, and the fabric is... I don't know. I just think it's too soft. I don't see it lasting into the future. This is probably better for a covered location. Also, I don't, I'm not crazy about how it feels, but I'm usually sitting on a towel over here, so it doesn't really matter. I do always have these cushions over here that I could try over there, but... I kind of prefer these underneath the glider because that way they're protected. These were expensive. Those are my fancy cushions. <laughs> and I would like for them to stay in a safe spot. The afternoon sun gets pretty crazy over here. So I think for this year, I'm fine with this. I think that it all worked out well. I think the cushions go well together, even though they're not the same color. I think the gray and the blue is totally fine. And they had those blue pillows to throw in there, and that kind of brings it all together. The rug, not centered. Not very high quality, obviously. I got it on clearance for $34.99. It's an it'll do kind of thing. The furniture is the main thing I can add to this over time. I would like to find an outdoor rug that fits the space better, and I think it's probably going to need to be round. I'm guessing because the way this space is shaped, I can't really get a rug centered all that well without moving all these palm trees out, and I don't want to do that. So. Changing out the rug will probably be something for next year. But right now, I'm just, I'm so, it looks so good. I'm so happy with this. I even kind of like how this random chair looks over here. Doesn't really feel out of place there. I think it's fine. You'll get another look at this when it's dry. It's Monday. I still have a few days to do some videos out here. But I wanted to pick up the camera and start doing this now because it's supposed to be off and on rain most of the week, which is just fantastic. We've needed it. I think the last video I talked about it just was so dry here and we hadn't had rain and then the next day we just started having downpour after downpour and like i said i'm not complaining we needed it and it's uh well, it's going to keep doing that so uh, there's the furniture and hopefully there will be more things happening in the video i mostly need to do some repots right now but all my stuff is sopping wet so i would it make i don't think it makes sense to do that right now I'm trying to think i know there's other things to update on i haven't actually picked up the camera and filmed anything in nearly two weeks other than the garden tour so 
I know I've done, I've done tons of stuff out here. Like all kinds of, I mean, I guess it's mostly just been moving things around and cleaning. Believe it or not, I have power washed out here twice. It's just this stupid white color that they painted this thing. Shows every single speck of dirt. It's only been like three days since I ran the power washer over here. It looks so gross. Anyways, I digress. Next year, change the color. I moved the hibiscus, which I think that was all in the video, and it's not very exciting. Don't know if that's even worth bringing up. Caladiums are booming and doing their thing. Hibiscus, look at the seminal pink. Remember, we had rain and storms last night, so looking a little bit ragged, but blooming like a champ. And the gingers, the ginger season. Gingers are coming up looking great. This is sweet memory. I thought it was a Suli rainbow. That's the whole thing I'm not gonna go into, but it's sweet rainbow, not sweet rainbow. <laughs> sweet memory, one of my favorites. Apparently had some dieback last year. Siam Ruby? No. Sangria. Let's go look at the Sangria. That one just started blooming too. I just whopped my elbow right on the side of the table there. Yeah, the Sangria is one that I got from Top Tropicals and has a very, very pretty smaller flower on it when compared to some of the other curcuma hybrids. You know, the hidden cone gingers, torch gingers. That's, it's such a broad blanket name to call them hidden cone gingers. That's why you should just call them hybrids, curcuma hybrids. That one has a very pretty flower on it. You know, remember I planted up this adenidia. That would have been in last week's video and uh, then moved it over here in the garden tour because I just didn't like how that single trunked one looked over here. And I was thinking that I was going to have to pull out all the stuff that I'd underplanted it with because, well, all the stuff I put in here was to be front and center for the seating area on the other side of the patio, but I kind of like it. It feels a little bit wasteful to put all those plants in there when they're tucked away and hidden, but from in the house, like when you're looking through the window, it looks really nice. Oh, and the Hilo Beauty. Found it. There it is. Florida Beauty, not Hilo Beauty. Coitium. I knew it was in there somewhere. Still don't know what this giant one is. But you see, even as I'm trying to talk about it, you see what I'm talking about? Like, is it's really hard to even see the plants, so it seems a little bit silly to have those planted up in there, right? They're all tucked away. Can't really appreciate them, but you can if you're somebody who actually stands back and looks at the garden and looks at the layers, which is something I always enjoy doing. Pardons that it's a decor. It was the beach party, you guys. You know, pool party stuff was happening. I know that that's like unforgivable to some people. It's fine. The kids were here playing around with some color, but I do need to pull those out. Y'all know those do not belong there. Oh, other thing. The bromeliads came. I ordered bromeliads and then was very excited about it and talked about it several weeks ago. And uh, the Etsy seller just marked them as shipped and a few weeks passed, nothing happened. I tried contacting them. I couldn't get in touch with them. And then they showed up in the mail. Even though the tracking said that a label had been created and it, they hadn't been shipped. So they apparently were in the mail for like two and a half weeks. Something along those lines. They showed up not looking great because they were in the mail for two and a half weeks. But they're here, so I suppose that's a good thing. Better late than never. So that's not really the fault of the seller, right? I guess UPS or USPS either lost the packet or something. I don't know. I don't usually have issues with USPS shipping things, but happens sometimes. This one pretty. These are called Yang. Yeah, they don't look great. Remember, they spent two to two and a half weeks in a box. So, kind of haggard, but <laughs> they're here. Looks like the storms knocked this one down. I think I need to put something in here to help hold this one up to get it more established. It's just a nice variegated bromeliad. They'll get more color <laughs> on them. There will be some kind of pinkish red hues in there. That'll all come as they start to adjust to the light and temperatures and everything out here. I do think I need to get a trailer on the front of these pots. I debated not doing it, talked about it back and forth a lot, but maybe just like a Lismachia of some kind, just something green come over the front. I think that would be nice. They are still missing something. I think that's partially because these bromeliads showed up looking so crusty and Ew, that they aren't giving me the dramatic finished effect that I was hoping for because they look like garbage. Which makes me want to get something to come over the front of the containers. You guys like the toucan? That's a great pool float. I've had that thing for years. It's been in the garage near up 
not, not in the attic, what's it called? A shelf above the garage door, like five years probably since I've had this thing out here and inflated it. I couldn't believe that it still holds air. Not only does it hold air, it holds children and grown adults jumping and landing on it and flopping it all over the place. Very sturdy. I don't even want to know what that thing would cost now. I think it was like 40 or 50 bucks back in the day, but that thing, its this is huge. It's hard to tell on camera, but that is a big pool float. You can easily fit two adults on that thing, no problem. Uh, I'll see if I can find it somewhere online and link it down below. If uh, I don't link it, it means I couldn't find it. Where are the, what was I looking for? Oh, right, so those other bromeliads, those are the Donna. And they are one for a lot of sun, but when you spend two weeks in a box, you just, you can't really just go out into the sun. I didn't have anywhere else to put them, so I just said, screw it. And I put them in the container that I intended them for, but they got crispy. That's it, fine. It just is what it is. You can't control those kinds of things. Hopefully they'll flush out with some more growth and start to look better fairly soon. The Lismachia. So there's a Lismachia that I have over here that I am loving absolutely loving i only have one because for whatever reason this thing this sucker was 9.99 with the annuals at the nursery don't know what that's about but it's called sunburst from the fancy fillers it's the, this one right here look at the it's just it's so nice it has really really nice long foliage on it and look at it just cascades and grows like crazy and i haven't even planted this it's just sitting in this container and it's doing all that so I don't want to go to the nursery and buy more, but could maybe take some cuttings and do it that way. It's a less macchia, so it should root out pretty easily and just grow and do its thing in those containers, I would think. This might not be a bad time to do something like that. I got distracted, sorry. <laughs> um, with the forecast for the rest of this week being off and on rain and then hurricane, I think on Wednesday, it's not going to be a hurricane here. It'll be a tropical depression by the time it gets this far north, which is like, what, 30, 40 mile an hour winds? I'm not concerned about that. Maybe a few inches of rain. That could be a problem because the ground is getting saturated, so flooding is becoming an issue. But uh, I don't want a flood zone. So. You know what I mean. The weather is going to be weird this week because there's a hurricane, I think, heading towards Houston a few hours. By the way, hi, Houston. I hope you all are okay. Anybody who's in the path? And my thoughts and prayers, it loses energy very quickly as it hits land. Uh, but as I was saying, I feel so we're transitioning off of something like that because there's something devastating happening down south, or it's about to in the next few hours. It's going to be overcast and cloudy off and on rain for the next few days. So if I were to try it and take cuttings from something and just directly root them into a container, this would probably be the right time to do it. But if I'm being realistic, we know it's not going to do very well. It's hot. This isn't really the appropriate time for something like that, but I don't know. I'm going to think on that. Last update. I, I got the lights pinned up. I need to adjust some of the clips. Some of them haven't held up very well. They're already coming down, so I might have to use super glue or something to get these things to stay up there. But the lights are up for the most part, and it looks really cool at nighttime, especially when we haven't just had rain that's knocked everything down. Yeah, the adhesive, the 3M adhesive, I think that maybe the spot just gets too much afternoon sun, it's cooking it, so they're just coming right off. I don't know. Super glow. I'm just going to super glue the clips up there. I bet that'll do the trick. And is that it? Okay, I think that's it. We're all caught up. The, there's things blooming and new furniture. That it's, it's so good. Don't you like it? I love the new furniture. Isn't this great? I feel like it just looks like a different backyard, and it's something that's been in my mind for such a long time. I'm so happy that this has finally happened with the steps and all this. Finally. Finally made it happen. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to watch the forecast and uh, wait for some things to dry out. If I can find some rooting hormone, which you don't necessarily need rooting hormone, but if I can find some, I think it would be better to use it because this isn't the most ideal time of year to be rooting something outdoors where you're not going to be having a humidity dome and temperatures are going to be up and down and up and down. I'm gonna look for hormone. If I can find it, then take some cuttings from that with smack yet and get it plopped over there into those Miami planters. Such a nice Lismachia, isn't it? My, I just realized, I have no idea if I've even been saying this right. Lismachia, I feel like that's what it's called. You know, Creepin' Jenny. That's an extremely broad term to give to this plant. These are an excellent annual. 
they propagate very, very easily. What I'm doing here, it's rooting powder in there, have some water. I'm going through and looking at the nodes, trying to see if there are any that have already sprouted out. Because that would be the most ideal spot to take a cutting, would be if there are some spots along the node where there's already some rootage going on. If I had thought about this earlier, as in a few weeks ago, I would have just draped the ends right here over a little pot of soil, and those nodes would have rooted down into there and then cut it, and then boom, new plants. That's what I prefer to do with creeping jennies and wismachias and plants that just are easy to root. But I wasn't thinking, does that not want to come off? Come on, get off there. Go ahead and give us a little bit of a cleanup while I'm in here, may as well. I'm not seeing anything that has roots on it. I'm going to dig through some more. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Might have this one right here. Looks like it's got some roots on it. See that? It was in contact with some moisture, some soil at some point. Like, that's pretty high up on the growth, though. I was hoping to be making my cuts more down here. I don't know if I want to cut a giant chunk off of this thing when it's already so long and beautiful. Yeah, that's all the way up there. That's up top. We got anything down low? That would be ideal. I'd prefer something down here. Well, it's always nice to have options. Look at this stuff. I've got it strung all over the place here, and I've spent entirely too much time trying to make up my mind as to where to make the cuts. It doesn't matter. These plants propagate so incredibly easily. The main thing to decide here is, do I want to just cut off a section and go node by node? So. I would be making a cut here and a cut there and then I'd have cuttings that look like this that I just put down into the soil or do end cuts where say on a piece maybe like this piece right here I could cut this right here at this node and then uh, split this apart or really I could just pull these so they have three different pieces right here get them rooted at the first node and let there be a, a strand that comes out of the soil with a lot of plants, that's not necessarily the way to do it when you're in the heat of the summer, but since it's a Lismachia, I don't really think it matters. They're so sturdy, it should root no problem. Like I mentioned, the only spots where I'm seeing roots are up high on the stem. I don't want to cut from up there. I really like the length and the flow on this entire plant. Look how long it is. Very, very long plant. So I am probably going to go with this piece right here That'll give me three. I think I'm going to want six in total. And that's just for safety, because I'm assuming that not all of them will make it. I'm going to take these side shoots right here, so that will give me four. I think that, yeah, that should do. Like I was saying, with this right here, I would make my cut, right? Well, I could make it up above everything if I wanted to. Or I could make it right here, and then I have an extra piece to root. But I think I'm just going to come in here just below each one of these nodes and make those cuts and take these and get them straight into the water. Another reason that this is a pretty good time to be doing this is because, well, it's been raining. So the plant is nice and hydrated, ideally. It's always going to be nice and hydrated, but it's summer. And, you know, day to day, you just never really know what the temperatures are going to be like out here. Is that a mealybug? There's something white and cottony. I don't think it's a mealy bug. I think we're okay. Make that cut right there. Then get this piece right here. It's a little one. That's a little guy. There's another one on there, but I don't I don't think it's quite thick enough. I don't think I want to try and use that other one. Get these down into the water. I'm going to make sure these have, I don't know, 10 minutes to soak. Again, it's less smack. You probably don't even need to do this, but because it's summertime and it's warmer outside right now. Well, actually, right now it's cooler. It's a fairly cool week, which is what I was saying before. We have overcast, there's lots of rain in the forecast, scattered throughout the next few days, and we're in the 80s. But next week, it's July. We'll be back up into the 90s, probably triple digits here within the next couple weeks, wouldn't shock me. So the main thing is just going to be keeping these nice and hydrated. Okay, I need two more. Got a combination of cuttings in here. They're mostly cuttings that are what we call end cuttings. So they're from the end of the growth. They have growth on the end. And there are a couple that are metal cuttings. The disadvantage of the metal cuttings is that, well, you have moisture loss at the end if you don't 
tap that off with some cinnamon or something to help close it up. And when you go to propagate these or plant these, you're going to be expecting growth to be coming up around everything and then spreading out. Whereas with these end cuttings could potentially, hopefully, end up having just elongation and continued growth from the end here. Does that make sense? I hope so. It's not uh, something that really matters with this plant. It's also not a plant that really needs a rooting hormone, but like I said, these aren't the most ideal conditions, the most ideal time of year to be doing this, so every little thing that's going to help may as well do it. I'm going to let these soak, I don't know for how long, probably 10-15 minutes. Don't know if they need it, but just to be safe, let them pull in some water and then I'm just, well, you'll see. I'll take you along with me down there. Okay, and now the exciting part where I pop a hole in the soil, just like so. Take my cutting, get it down in there. I want to make sure that that end, really the node, is what I'm looking for. Can we even see what's going on here? The node. Right there, get that node. Nice and covered in that powder. And then insert into the hole that I just made with the chopstick and backfill. Okay, yeah, no dramatic before and after you saw it. There's cuttings, they're tiny, it's not much to see yet. I put some stakes in the bromeliads. I think that looks better with them standing up instead of falling over the fronts of these pots. And I got the Lismachia down here in the front. I didn't put any over here, which I probably should have, but I just know it's not going to grow well on this side of the container. I figured I can take more cuttings if I need to as these get bigger. Okay, that was fun. All right, what's next? We got some rain. It started right around the time I finished putting those cuttings in there and rain for about a day and a half, nearly two days. If I don't have to water plants today. It's a beautiful day. It's like 82. Pretty sticky. Don't have to water. This is fantastic. I know, not the case for everybody. The hurricane did some damage from what I'm hearing, but I'm surprisingly not hearing much, which is weird. If you're in Houston, I hope you're okay and anywhere else in the path. I know that there are massive tornado outbreaks. For us, it was just like, I don't know, an inch and a half, maybe two inches of rain, something like that. It was a lot of rain, much needed rain. Too. We've been getting more rain. It's like July and June switched places. Usually in June we get lots and lots of rain and then July it's like, eh, you get some here and there, but it's just unbelievably hot. Whereas this year we're getting that rain in July and June was pretty dang dry. Anyways, got Colby out here. There's not much that I can do in the rest of this video because I remember you know, I had family in town. It's been the process and everything going on in the last couple videos so that I could have last week off to spend time with family but they're coming back because they did a road trip so they were here and then they drove to the other side of the state to a different state and they went down south to another state and they're coming back up here for like a day day and a half and flying home and uh, I forgot about that last part where they're coming back for it I didn't forget but in my planning to take the week off I didn't really account for that but I feel like I don't always have to have an hour-long video, and that's just not going to be the reality for the rest of the year, probably. I was able to make long videos for the last few weeks because I had a lot to do. There's a lot of catching up to get done out here, but as of now, this is nowhere near as much. Okay, Colby apparently likes the Virginia Creeper. That's fine. That's the, there's a vine that's popping out of the side of the hot tub. Colby's going to help us control that. Turbo, did you get your butt out of the way? Come here. Come here. There we go. Everybody see the tortoise. He's doing some pruning for us. Much appreciated. And this is, I'm trying to get things dried off because they'll be back this afternoon and everything out here is just sopping wet. Those cushions. Uh, <laughs> you get what you pay for, right? They don't hold off moisture all that well. That is a problem. I might scotch guard them. I've heard mixed things about scotch guarding outdoor fabric. Some people say, in fact, a furniture store told me when I was shopping for furniture for the house well, several months ago that the Scotch Guard can make the fabric not last as long. It helps it resist stains, but it does something to the tightness of the weave. I don't, I don't know if any of that's true, 
but with these, I think putting something on there to help them with water repelling would probably be a good idea because they get wet and these things stay wet. They stay very, very, very wet. He's so happy to be outside today. You were inside all day yesterday. Poor Turbo. All that rain. Couldn't come out. Yes, I know Turbo. So fun to be outside. Here you go. Ready? Ready? Left-handed. We'll make it in the pool. Yeah, you can get it. Go on. Why do you do this? I don't understand. I th you need my permission? Go get it. Get your toy. You're free. Get it. Go swim. Turbo, go swim. Get your toy. Ever had a retriever where when you throw the toy, he runs and then stops and he's like, I need you to tell me I can go get it. And he doesn't always, do I don't know why he does it. He's an interesting character. You know, Colby, you've got a whole entire head of lettuce sitting around the corner. You're in the mood for flowers? Apparently Colby is in the mood for flowers. So you can have this one. It's got a Japanese beetle on it. You go bud. Want some hibiscus? Hibiscus are yummy. Feeling camera shy? Okay, never mind. I'm sorry, I'll leave you alone. I have one more of each one of these Sun Impatience over here. The Hot Coral, which is the orange, and then the Red Candy, which is the pink, and the Purple Candy, which is the purple. I guess we'll call that purple, that's what they're calling it. The reason that I have extras for those is because, let's see if Colby wants to eat those, I didn't plant them all the way down in front of this row because I was waiting to figure out the palm tree situation for this back corner. So if I had planted it up, then whatever I had right here would have been smashed. But I don't know if I really want to fill this in the rest of the way. I kind of like it stopping right here. That and these gingers, they're just going to keep growing. They'll be flowering here in a couple of weeks. And they start to shade things right here fairly heavily. So I don't... Should I bother? I don't think I should. And I only say it because I have another spot where I think that they might look nice. See, over here, I have this big line of them planted, and uh, it just, I love it. I think it looks great, but I also feel like it seems incomplete. I think it might look good to go ahead and pop a hot coral right here, then another red candy, and then a purple candy, just to have that come down to this corner some more. Maybe, but I don't think I can really get it back far enough. Let's see, how much can I pull on this sweet potato vine? Oh yeah, there's there's room in there. That's just growing over the spot. I can pull that out, see? That opens that up, so I can go hot coral and just have it come down a little bit further. I don't know. Just thinking out loud there. Y'all tell me what you think. I'm gonna hold off on that for right now because I'm really trying not to make a mess because the family's coming back and I would just like for things to stay clean but it also would be really nice to get the leftovers planted. Here they are. It's just those three. And they're a decent size. I think that would add some nice color to that spot. I'm tempted to go over there and actually set them down so we can have a look at them, but then I'm gonna have to worry about making sure that they stay hydrated and everything. I don't think I, well, oh. never mind. Only seems fair to give a visual since I have them. Yeah. I think that looks better having them come down. Obviously they'll look different once they're in the ground, right? They'll be down further and they'll start to mound up. I also think that I have the purple and the red flipped. I need to move the red over here, move the purple over there. I don't know why they call it red candy. In my head I keep wanting to call this one the lighter one. This one right here, that one. I keep wanting to call it the pink candy, but it's called the red candy, so I just have to remember that that's the red candy. Like that. Look over the other side of the pool, get a better view. Okay. So maybe you can see what I'm talking about. I don't know what happened to the beach ball. I think it just, it had a rough night. We'll get some air in it later. You see what I'm saying? How, since it had stopped right there, it just, imagine that there's no plants right where my fingers are. It just looks incomplete. I think that taking that down just a smidge further would look better. Whereas over here on this side, to me that this looks fine. I don't think it needs anything else. But over here, it just feels like a few more, just a few more feet and it would make more sense. Like it would almost look like this whole entire swoop goes in, comes in and then is like wrapping around and it's just a trick on the eye. It's not really, there's none of them planted from here to right there, but you know, you don't really know that when you're standing back here because you can't see it, right? So yeah, I'm mean, making sense. I know I'm probably overthinking things. I'm really good at doing that, but see what I'm saying? It's got, that looks better, right? Just by having a few more over there? I think it's a good idea. I should probably go ahead and get those planted. See, down here, I don't think it necessarily needs it. 
maybe it does. I don't know. I think it needs it more down there than it needs it over here. That's all I'm saying. Okay, well, now that it's done, <laughs> it's bugging me only because it doesn't flow in. It doesn't really swoop around, but it will appear that it does once these three fill out. I did plant them extremely close together, and that's just because we're so late in the season that uh, I, don't, I don't feel like waiting for them to grow together. I'm just going to do their thing right away. So in a couple weeks, I think those should blend in and look pretty good there. Oh, and it turns out I do still have an extra. I thought I was done, but I'm not. I still have a hot coral and a ridiculous coleus over here. So that's fine. Still have some plants to work with in mid-July. And I thought I was done planting everything. Actually, I don't know why I say it like that. I'm usually planting stuff up the entire growing season. It's just I thought that I was at a point where I was like, okay, everything's done. Just going to hang out and chill for a couple weeks and get back to doing some other containers. Get those pots put into the recycle pile. You know, this is the time of year where I start to do more detailed things like you know maybe planting up a giant clamshell or succulent arrangements those sorts of things but uh it's just a couple annuals that's not a big deal and I might be able to squeeze that last orange into this corner down here maybe right here right in the spot maybe so the reason that I've been hesitant with that about bringing them down further was I well one I like the little cluster of shells and everything that's right here and I like the idea of having the space open to pop little things in for details to naturalize the spot. Like maybe a Tradescantia coming out between the coconuts and the seashells. Or an orchid. Might throw an epidendron in there. That might look nice. Something like that. I have an epidendron that I'm thinking about putting over here. So I think that that would look good coming up from the spot right there. I need some more color. <laughs> I don't really need. Need's not the right word. I'd like some more color over here. I had a setback with my favorite sun and patient, the tropical rose. This was a big, beautiful, mounded plant right here. And what I'm assuming is a possum came in here and dug it up a few days ago. And uh, well, now it looks like garbage. It needs to be, yeah, see? There was a big hole there, and I think it's just too much weight. I had it replanted, but I don't think that's going to work. I'm going to have to come in here and cut it back. I'm really bummed about this because that's always one of my favorite plants to have out here every year. So those big variegated leaves with all the beautiful fuchsia pink flowers in the front of this container. And well, that's all it took was just one possum and now it's gone. But there's still hope. I need to get that straightened out. It looks like it's still popped back up. Whatever it was, like I said, assuming a possum, it just destroyed the roots on this thing absolutely annihilated it so i don't have high hopes but if you give it a cut back then in a couple months it'll probably be a nice big beautiful plant again yeah i need to sort of got that rust spot over there i scrubbed it off and it looked like it was gone and it came back i'm wondering if it's like dripping from somewhere is it coming from somewhere up top the only other thing this looks great doesn't it well you get it i'm drying everything out you know what's going on here the only other thing that I'm thinking about doing over here, well, one, I would like to maybe do something different with the top of this table. I just threw some stuff up there to make it look nice. The cabinet, that is, not the table. But I was thinking maybe doing, like, the green paneling on the wall right behind everything. And you know, just that real cheap stuff. It frankly, looks really cheap, but I think it might look kind of cool behind everything. It would just kind of make this be even more of its own little area by having a backdrop there. And I'm looking at lights, too. They need to change those out up there. They're getting old. One of them doesn't really work. Like, it kind of works, but not really. And that bugs me because I feel like that's not safe to have one where the light flickers. It's not the bulb. <laughs> I checked the bulb. It's just, I guess, old. I don't know. If something's off with the wiring. So if you go ahead and fix the wiring, we may as well put up new fixtures, right? This will look really good with an orchid right here. I think that's coming in the mail today. I was going to wrap this video up, but I've, I'll wait for the orchid to come. It may not be in bloom, so it might not be anything exciting just yet, but... Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. I'm going to wait for the orchid to show up. And it looks like I need, do need to glue some of these strings back in. Yeah. That 3M stuff is just not holding them up. I think it's too hot and too humid. So, super glue. That should do the trick.
Don't you love when you order plants and they send you extras? Ordered six. Six of these curcumas right here. These are the Siam Reds, which pretty much the only ones I can find for sale. I already planted a bunch of these and they haven't done much, so I ordered some more because I want to get them spread around some more in the garden. And they sent me eight. I ordered six. That's a nice surprise. Love when that happens. Gingerwood Nursery on Etsy. These are nice looking corms too. They're nice and firm. They have some growth on them. I like these better than the ones that I planted before. So hopefully those are going to do something. The orchid did show up that evening after I said what I was talking about. It's like a day and a half later. There it is. It's an epidendron and it needs a larger, very heavy pot because as epidendrons go, very top heavy. This one is called Vichii and it has a pink and yellow flower on it. It's a very pretty epidendron, very simple orchid to grow. One that I highly recommend for people who are just getting into orchids because they just, they grow like weeds. Not really, like that's dramatic. For an orchid, they grow like weeds. Had to do some rearranging out here. Not really rearranging. Had to pull the chair over because with the whole family here, didn't all fit at the table very comfortably. There was a stroller with the baby and I've had a cough and just been not feeling great for the last couple weeks. Feel mostly fine now, but I've keeping my distance from the baby. I haven't even gotten to hold them yet, but you know, when you're sick, you don't want to hold the babies. So I sat over here, <laughs> far, far, far away from the baby, but it's been two weeks. So I'm sure I'm not contagious anymore. I should probably go ahead and put this back. May as well keep your distance. You know, don't want to make a newborn sick. That could be really bad. There we go. Is that better? Yeah. The, so the thing I don't like about this rug is that you can't really slide stuff around on it. The plasticky nature of it is great for cleaning it also isn't fading which i'm shocked by i just assumed at the price point this rug was going to just bleach out in the afternoon sun over here but it hasn't done that hold on to its color i guess it's only been three weeks so maybe i'm getting ahead of myself there but for 34.99 it's been pretty sturdy i want to show everyone the new leaves that just opened up on the no note look at it isn't that beautiful it's a big fat thick leaf the last one very pretty too. This one, it's very round and oblong. It's a nice looking leaf. Yeah, I know. I need to water. It rained yesterday, so I figured everything was fine, but I didn't get the bags. If you don't get those bags, they just shrivel up. I should know better at this point. Over here in this spot, there's some more stuff that I want to do, but I'm still waiting on plants. I mentioned, I think it was in last week's vlog. My brain's kind of playing catch up here with everything, because last week's vlog, everything that was in that was filmed over two weeks ago. But uh, th yeah, that's the whole point there though, is that I did order more heliconias. There's supposed to be four of them coming in the mail from Nature's Hills, and it says they ship out in seven to 10 days, and we're pushing 16 days, I believe, I think, since I placed the order. And I haven't gotten a shipping notification yet, so I don't, I don't know what's going on here, but I have a spot over here where I want a heliconia, and then I was going to do a heliconia in the back of this container, in this container where I have the sun patient, that sun patient needs to be moved forward because it's not getting quite enough sun tucked back there with everything else. And then one in the front right here, right? Is that one, two, three, four? Yeah, yeah, that's all of them. But they aren't here yet. I want to keep playing around and arranging things. So here's what happened. <laughs> now that it's the end of the video, let me go and explain everything that I should have explained in the beginning. When I had the furniture delivered, uh, I had like 102 fever, wasn't really feeling all that great, so I didn't film the putting together process or any of that. It was just one of those things where I was like, okay, family's going to be here in three days. I've got a lot of work to do and just got to push through it. And that was on top of you know, trying to make sure everything's nice and clean and just wanted things to look nice, right? Everybody's coming here to get the pool cleaned up. That was a big one because the kids, they, the niece and nephew, they spent all their time in the pool and in the hot tub over there. So... You know, it was just a busy time. So basically, I just tossed plants around. Didn't put much effort into like any design aspect of anything. I was just throwing things together to get them up and off the patio to make room for the furniture and to just get it over here. So this is just the beginning of things. I would like to play around with it some more. I want the rest of the plants to show up in the mail first. And I'm hoping next week that those heliconias will be here. I also have an elephant ear coming that's, I mean, it, I don't think it's gonna look great when it gets here. It's a variegated tide giant, which I'm really excited about. 
and in the listing, they showed it in a pot. And they said that was representative of what they'd be sending. But then the person sent me a picture of the plant, which I appreciate. The communication's been excellent with the seller. I didn't even ask them to communicate, but they just randomly sent a message saying, hey, I'm not going to get around to shipping today, but tomorrow. And I was like, okay, cool. Thanks for letting me know. And then they sent me a picture of the plant freshly dug out of the ground. And I was like, well, that's not what I thought I was ordering, but that's okay. It just means, though, that the plant's going to need more TLC when it arrives. So... I'll probably film when it gets here, but I doubt it's going to look very good. And then I have some smaller orchids coming. Uh, Vandacious type and Phalaenopsis type, just to get some more color. And over here, the only thing that's really bugging me is what, well, the situation here with the Tropical Rose Sun Patient. I'm pretty bummed about that. That was just a big statement plant. So it sucks that it got dug up and its roots got chewed up by whatever, I'm assuming a possum. And uh, I don't think that this is looking great with the black coral, Colocasia, right here. I don't. It's just I don't like the black elephant ears in the shade. So I think I need to pull that and do some other things, which uh, I'm looking forward to doing next week. I'm still <laughs> having more people over this weekend. Going to be entertaining. So I just I'm still in the mode of I don't want to make a mess yet. But after Saturday, the day this video comes out, after that we can get dirt all over the place. Start repotting more things. Do some more rearranging. Maybe some crafty type things right now, though. I just I just want to leave it. It's because of the new color on this patio. A speck of dirt gets on there, and you have to brush it off. Like, it doesn't even hose off. It leaves a stain. So I'm trying to be more intentional with repots and things like that and wait until I have a whole bunch of things that are ready to be repotted with a similar type of mix and have a designated spot because bringing the power washer in and out once a week is just it's a pain in the butt and i don't enjoy doing it which is saying something because i love using the power washer but it is getting old having it out here all the time uh, yeah that's where where i was everything out here pumpkin you see pumpkin hey baby boy hi pumpkin pumpkin you say hi there she is there's my baby girl she's so cute we're going to just squeeze her face i think it might be nice to throw some cinder blocks or something underneath these cordolins lift those up just a smidge higher, and then I need to put this isn't potted up, as y'all know, because I just pulled that Lismachia out of there earlier to get cuttings off of it. And <laughs> those are plants that are just sitting in those containers. I haven't potted them up yet. They're doing so well, then I'm like, well, I guess it's okay, right? They don't seem to mind. They're doing fine. I don't want to do anything that's going to disrupt or slow down blooming on those heliconias. So once they start to get root bound, root bound might not be the right word. Once they're established into their containers, they bloom really, really well. When you bump them up into a larger pot that slows down the blooming and they spend more time focusing on filling out that space and putting up more growth which is a good thing that's what you want but right now they're just so good and so happy i just i just i want to leave them alone but i could faux plant the container just lift everything up put soil in there and plant up the uh, trailer that's in the front and just leave the heliconia potted inside there some things do with the orange bird of paradise worked well because you don't want to repot them too often or else you can lose some blooming that didn't make sense they won't bloom as abundantly if you repot them very often they like to have some tension around their roots they want to fill out their containers the heliconias is kind of the same thing it's partially a time of year thing obviously lighting right that's just part of plants in general with the heliconias it's just it's a thing they need to establish their containers to bloom well that's all i'm trying to say so i'd like to get something done over there and uh, over here too like this i don't it's just bugged me i think it's just this caladium i don't like that caladium right there it doesn't fit with everything else and i could do better maybe one of those curcumas the banray reds that might look really good right there and just a final thought before we go this what is this caladium does anybody know i need a name on this thing it's hard to find an identification. It reminds me of a radiant because it's white and red, but then it has other growth on it that is white and speckled. So what the heck's going on there? That doesn't make any sense. This thing is a monster. Look at the size of the sleeve. That's really big for a first year growth. I'm, Cause I'm just assuming that this is one of the colladium bulbs from the assorted packs that I tossed into the containers. So that's first year growth, right? Look at that. I mean, that's a big leaf. Really big. That's This is spring fling. Great caladium, but very different. Look at that. That's so big. Look at that. These things are freaking huge. I like what the begonias are doing here. There's a nice drift. They're very dainty, but it's just, it's the caladium 
it's throwing things off for me. So I need to pull that out, move it somewhere else, and put something else in that spot. I know, nobody asked. This is all stuff we can work on next week when it's actually time to do it. So, yeah, thanks for hanging out. What do we think of the new furniture? I uh, don't have a name for it, but it'll be down in the description. I probably flash it up on the screen at some point. I think it's great, but, you know, clearly I'm biased because I bought it. I really just feel like the space is finished off very, very well. Like, th there's things I could do to improve it. Changing out the rug, probably putting a round rug over here, or maybe just a matter of I don't want to do this, but in order to get that rug centered, I'd have to pull out the big palm trees, and the big palm trees would have to slightly be on top of it. I don't want to do that right now. I'm just like, this is good. This is fine. I got it all set up. And it's looking good. You can get back to doing dirty work where I'm moving all kinds of stuff around next week if I decide that's necessary. For the most part, I just, I really like it. I think it looks good. Finishes off the area. Have the nice seating area over there. I think it would look nice to do something on this wall here. <laughs> at the very least, water the flower bag. I could use it. Yeah, five years. I've wanted to do something right here. Finally, got it done. And I like it. Patio is open and it's clean and there's seating. It just feels like there's an outdoor space now that's more inviting. This is definitely a step up from the table and piles of recycling and fertilizer that was sitting over here before, right? I mean, come on. The bar was pretty low there, but I'm happy with it. Hey, doggies. It's not hot. It's like 82 outside. Boy, you guys, they, they, they want to go inside, which is very unusual. It's a beautiful day. It's not going to be for much longer. I think it's supposed to be very hot this weekend. Exciting stuff happening over here. Finally caught up to. I don't like when the vlogs are multiple weeks filmed in advance. It just it throws everything off. I don't like it. Especially when I have to film things out of orders, like the garden tour was filmed after the vlog. It messes with my brain. I don't enjoy it. Pardon the stuff in the tree. I told my niece uh, we had those popper things that you pull the string and the confetti flies out for 4th of July and I said try and decorate the palm trees because that way it would keep everything off the ground and she did. She did, did a pretty good job, right? Okay, yeah, I said I was going to go. Comment down below say hi. What's going on in your gardens? You know, it's pretty hot and very wet for a lot of y'all. Hope everybody's safe. Hope that Burl wasn't too much of a problem. Maybe hopefully people in Houston are starting to get their power back. It's pretty hot out there. It's not a good time to not have power. And just say hi. Love talking to everybody. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye.